Same-sex accommodation is about not just accommodation, but it's about a wider privacy and dignity agenda, and, and therefore it's just one element of that. It's about ensuring that the experience that patients and service users have when they receive care in NHS settings is as good as it can possibly be in terms of their privacy, their dignity, and respecting their rights. And so the same-sex accommodation is just one element around much wider agenda. The changes around same-sex accommodation over the years, and certainly most, much more recently, have been that whereas maybe people may have had um, experienced hospital care in what we called a, a nightingale ward, you know, the big open wards, um, they're now, you're now much more likely to receive care in either in a single room or a shared room in bays with maybe four or six beds in them. So the experience now is, is much more of a sort of a privacy um, rather than a very open environment. Privacy and dignity is very important to Bradford Teaching Hospitals. It's very important to us that the experience that our patients receive when they come here for care is second to none. And, you know, we repeatedly hear from patients that they expect to come and have good clinical care and expert care. And, and what they also expect alongside of that is, is that they are treated with dignity and respect and that they come away feeling that they have been well cared for and well looked after and, and an essential part of that is, is being treated with dignity and respect. Um, Bradford Royal Infirmary particularly is, is um, a site that dates back to the 1930s so some of the accommodation we have is quite old and we have some of the traditional Nightingale wards which um, as part of, of, of the work that we've been doing is, is to try and um, improve the standard of accommodation there um, to um, you know offer more um, privacy really so some of that's been about introducing bays into the into the nightingale wards and generally improving the standard of accommodation in terms of the bathrooms and the, and the um, toilet areas so um, that's about you know having full length partitions and um, generally um, increasing the level of privacy that's available to patients. One of the main changes that we've had is that we've, our bathrooms have all been refurbished and we now have more bathroom facilities so that in each bay there are a couple of bathrooms. We've also got the signage now to indicate you know, the specific same sex. We have the new bath which is now better to clean underneath for infection control because it's elevated. We've got new flooring which again is easy to clean. Uh, new walls, new curtains, everything has been brand new. If you compare um, Ward 11, for example, which was originally a Nightingale ward, um, the changes that we've made have, have really improved that and have um, the original Nightingale wards were, were basically an open ward area where um, all of the beds were in one sort of room, if you like, so sort of 20 beds um, down either side of the, of, the, of the ward with perhaps a nurse's station in the middle. And what we now have on Ward 11 is, is an area um, with, that's been separated into three bays, separated by doors, so that that improves. Um, we, they've also brought the ceilings down, so it improves the the noise levels and improves the um, you know dignity for uh, an experience from a patient point of view. So it's much um, quieter and there's more separation between the beds as well. When you when you're a female, I think you need your privacy. I really do. And sometimes in the old hospitals, you don't get the privacy that, you know, you have now. And, uh, I mean, you can go to the shower rooms and things like that. And, you know, uh, you, you don't, you're not afraid uh, if, the, if you were going somewhere that you were going to be seen because it's so private. It's so much changed, you know, and the, the nurses and... and and that I'll have time for you these days, you know what I mean? And nothing is any ever a problem for them. You just ask, and if they can do it there, and then they'll do it. For anybody coming into hospital, um, you know, it, it is a, a quite a, um, a nerve-wracking experience for people. They feel anxious, you know, often, obviously, they feel unwell, otherwise they wouldn't be in hospital. But on top of that, um, they feel vulnerable as well. And, and I think that... Being able to treat people and, and, and look after people um, in an environment where they're able to maintain that dignity um, just sort of takes one other pressure off them really. Here at Airedale um, we've used the funding that was made available to um, have um, doors on the end of the bays um, 
and also some signage um, to ensure that um, uh, patients are clear that they are uh, either male or female facilities. Um, and the signage, a lot of thought's gone into that um, regarding um, for people who are visually impaired, for um, uh, people with dementia. Um, and um, the doors on the bays are able to be closed at night time so that people can get better rest. The first thing I noticed was patients coming into hospital without slippers and coming into hospital in an emergency situation without clothes. They came in the night shirts. So we were having to discharge them back to the residential homes, nursing homes, back home in their night clothes with a blanket. Now this really, I, I couldn't bear to see it and to me it was against all forms of dignity and it was also unsafe in the very cold winter weather that we did have last year. So I thought what can we do about this? So I approached Friends of Airedale to see if we could get a supply of slippers and um, for a very small amount of money, £200, we could supply all our older patients who came in without slippers with a pair of safe and comfortable shoes. Um, this also enabled us to discharge um, our patients earlier instead of keeping them in hospital overnight until um, a pair of shoes were brought in to enable the physiotherapist to, um, to, to actually do the safety check. These white bags enable us to wash patients' laundry individually so we can put uh, 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 we can put uh, the, the laundry inside the bags um, and they go into the washing machine and they come out at the other end uh, clean um, and our laundry service um, neatly press them. We're looking to have um, example, examples of Dignity Champions that um, have their own ideas and, and have really um, taken it on board and, and put their own efforts um, despite their hard day job um, but have, have, have gone that extra mile and done it as, as, as well as really. Um, and um, but the, so the, it's the little things that patients remember, mm -hmm. and it's those it's paying attention to the detail. Um, so it doesn't have to be big things that people are doing. It could be just the small things. And one example um, is the um, the privacy indicators, which we now attach onto the curtains. It's an initiative that's spread, uh, you know, throughout other hospitals as well. Mm -hmm. We we'll, we expect all of our providers to continue to sustain the delivery of same sex accommodation within their environments and that this isn't just something that's being done for a short space of time and then we'll go back to the old days. Um, this is something that will be maintained. Each of our providers will have to provide plans that they agree with us as commissioners um, to say this is how we're going to make sure that this privacy and dignity agenda is really maintained. This is how we're going to make sure that same-sex accommodation continues to be delivered and we will work with our providers to make sure that that happens.